Welcome to the 1000 Day Sober Podcast. My name is Lee Davey. I am not an alcoholic. I refuse to be anonymous. I am alcohol free as fuck and live a self-led life and spend every waking moment helping other people do the same. Hope you're all doing well out there in the world. Beautiful sunshine here in Cardiff. Uh, on the weekend, I, me and the whole family actually, we're all going to London. Uh, my The company that I work for in the high stakes poker industry, Triton, I've got a tournament there. So we're going to be in London for a month. Uh, so that's really super exciting. Documentary filmmaking, TV production, getting into the feminine and uh, really exploring my creative genius, if you like to say. And then after that, um, Liza and Zia are flying off to LA. They're going to go see family. I have a meeting with the US Embassy to see if I can get my B1, B2 visa. So that's a really critical moment in our life. And then I get three to four weeks um, on my own in Cardiff. Uh, my son Jude's going to come and live with me for a little bit. And I'm just going to really focus in uh, growing and developing Strive. So many ideas, so many ways that I want to reach out and make a difference uh, in the lives of people, particularly um, helping people to become alcohol-free as fuck and to live a self-led life. So really, really, really excited for the rest of 2023. It's going to be a spanking year, and I hope it's the same uh, for every one of you out there. And if you uh, are not feeling that it's so great and you need some help and support, then make sure you check out the Strive Method across all social media channels, YouTube, join our Substack, our email, um, let us support you, okay? Now, I want to start today by giving a shout out to Nikki Kennedy. Uh, Nikki took part in our recent Crush Your Alcohol Cravings cheat code giveaway, and she earned herself a free one-year subscription to Strive worth $1,200, or if you're a Brit like me, £930. So welcome to the family, Nikki. We will be getting in touch with you very shortly and showing you uh, how it works. Get involved in the Strive community, get involved in the Strive method, and start getting on our Zoom calls and receiving some group coaching. So really looking forward to getting to meet you, Nikki. Oh, and just to say, the giveaway is still not there, but if you head over to method at gmail. No, this is uh, You'll find that the Crush Your Alcohol Cravings Cheat Code mini course is still there. It's still up. It's still available for free. Go grab it as soon as you can, because next week uh, we're going to be releasing a free ebook uh, called uh, The Alcohol Secrets Bible Exposing the Liquid Lies. So go over there and get that Cravings Cheat Code mini course before we pull it down. All right. On to this week's show. Now, I'm always saying to the people that I work with, the people in Strive and my one-to-one clients, that in order for you to get on, in order for you to rise out of victim consciousness, rise out of that drama and into this state of uh, self-energy, that you have to take a risk, you have to be vulnerable. And I'm going to do that today. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to be vulnerable. Walk the walk as I talk the talk, so to speak. And I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to take a risk because I'm creating a new series, right? So this series is called The Alcohol Free as Fuck Shift, Unearthing My Past to Build a Self-Led Future, okay? And this series is going to be where I chronicle my life so you can see where the roots of the liquid lie took hold, uh, leading to alcohol reliance and an unconscious way of living centered around the drama of victim consciousness. And hopefully, as you go through the episodes, you'll also learn how that I got out of that hellhole, or I'm still crawling out of that hellhole in certain aspects of my life. It doesn't mean I'm not going to uh, continue interviewing people. I am. Uh, in fact, what I might do is weave a particular guest into the narrative of this series um, so they can give greater context on some of the topics that we'll be uh, touching upon. The idea to do this actually came out of my conversation last week with Ollie Hollis. Ollie was like, yeah, and Lee, I really loved it back in the day when you would have these really raw kind of like on this podcast where I was walking home from Starbucks during my time into hunger in California, uh, just shooting the shit and explaining to you what I was struggling with you know, on my phone. And it was like, yeah, you know, people really respond to that. And while it's been a long time uh, since I uh, became alcohol-free as fuck, it doesn't mean that I, I don't struggle in life, right? I do every day. Uh, so this gave me the idea to get back to uh, sharing my story uh, in the hope that it can inspire and help people to better understand their own. So today we're going to be starting with episode one, 
Uh, it's called Before Day One, The Roots of My Struggle. And please write to me at the strive method at gmail.com to let me know your thoughts, whether you think it's a pile of pants or whether you feel it's worth uh, something worth pursuing. I'd really love to hear your feedback. Okay, on with the show. So today we were beginning a journey, a journey of understanding, healing, and ultimately freedom. And this isn't just my journey. It's our journey, a journey towards a life alcohol-free as fuck and self-led. And we're starting this journey at the beginning, literally. I mean, the very, very beginning, before I took my first breath, before my mother cradled me in her arms and before the world as I knew it began. My mother, a young girl of just 18, gave birth to me alone, shunned, scared, and filled with a concoction of emotions that I can only begin to imagine. Now, this was back in 1975, a time when being an unwed mother was still a scandal, an unwelcome deviation from the societal norm. And if that wasn't enough, my biological father, whom I've never met and left way before I came out of the womb, he was Chinese, and that made me half caste. And back then, in our society, that too was a difference too bold and too prominent to overlook. You may wonder why I'm telling you all of this and what it has to do with living an alcohol-free as fuck and self-led life, or why the story starts even before I was born. Well, trauma, that complex beast, doesn't need you to be aware or conscious to set its roots in you. It can develop in your physiology before you even enter the world. And that's where my story, and in many ways my journey towards alcohol reliance began. The feelings of abandonment, fear, confusion, shame, guilt, embarrassment, humiliation that my mother experienced during her pregnancy and my birth, they didn't just leave a mark on her, they also left an indelible mark on me, unseen, unspoken, but very much present. From birth until the age of five, I lived with my grandparents and my mother's five siblings. Despite being surrounded by family, I was idolized and I was spoiled. I was the child of the house. But then my mother met the man who would become my father and we moved away. Now that's a story for our next episode, but it's crucial to understand that the experiences from these early years had a profound impact on me, setting the stage for how I would respond to the world as I grew older. My racial heritage also became a source of struggle and pain. Being half Chinese in a predominantly white community, I felt the sting of difference and the longing to belong. And as we'll explore in the episodes to come, this experience became one of the many reasons that I was drawn to alcohol. From a young age, I felt very different, and I felt very lonely. And the intense reactions I had when interacting with other children were signposts. Signposts pointing to a trauma that started before birth and resurfaced throughout my life. It became one of the barriers that made it so challenging for me to live a self-led life. Always, always testing the limits of my window of tolerance. So as we delve into this series, we'll see how these early experiences, these traumatic imprints, shaped my relationship with alcohol and steered my life. But more importantly, we'll also see how understanding these influences and actively working to heal them opened the path towards an alcohol-free as fuck and self-led life. And that's our journey. One that's not always easy, but one that's worth every step. And I hope, I hope you'll join me in it. But before we wrap up today, I do invite each and every one of you listening to take a step with me. You see, our past, our experiences, our traumas, they don't define us, but they do shape us. They contribute to the people we become. And understanding them and acknowledging them is the first step towards healing and growth. So I challenge you to look back, delve 
into your early years and consider how your experiences might have influenced your life and more importantly, your relationship with alcohol. Share your reflections, share your thoughts, share your fears and share your hopes. Email me at thestridemethod at gmail.com or if you are a part of our Strive family, post in the Strive community. If either of those is a step too far for you, write it all on a piece of paper and just burn it. I'm here to listen, I'm here to learn and to support. Because remember, this is not just my journey, it's our journey. And for those of you ready to take the next step towards a self-led life, just get over to www.thestrivemethod.com and explore what we have to offer for you. Let's walk this path together towards understanding, towards healing, and towards living an alcohol-free as fuck life. So don't forget to join us next time as we delve deeper into my journey and continue this critical conversation. We'll be looking at the ages between six and 10. And remember, you're not alone. We are in this together. Thanks for listening and supporting this podcast. I appreciate all of you. Much love and strive on.